Hello and welcome to A Closer Look. My name is Gail Tatum. Today I have a special guest with me, Mr. Frank Bartle, who is the solicitor for the North Penn School District. Frank, thanks for joining me today. My pleasure. Thank you. I'm glad to have a chance to talk with you, and I want to have people have a sense to get to know you a little bit. So I think we'll start at the beginning, not the real beginning. <laughs> I know you're a, you've are you been a lifelong uh, Lansdale resident, haven't you? Yes, uh, I've lived here. Uh, uh, of course, my, my parents uh, uh, lived here since the time I was about uh, three or four years uh, right? old, okay. and uh, our entire family has been here since then, yes. I know that you, you are a graduate of North Penn. I graduated from North Penn in 1970, which uh, uh, seems uh, long ago now, yeah, but know, it, uh, it didn't at the time. Yeah, I know. And you were the first, uh, oldest of four boys in your yes, family. that's right. And we were chatting earlier that it was a family of swimmers. Uh, my uh, my two brothers, uh, mm -hmm. Tony and Billy, and myself were uh, all swimmers uh, at one time or another in, in the North Penn area. I had the, the uh, privilege of interviewing your brother yesterday, who of course was the coach for the, our champion boys swim team. We had a we had a nice time doing that. You were uh, when you were at North Penn, however, we did not have a pool. No, I went to the so, uh, to the other North Penn High School, the one on uh, Penn Street in right, Ramsdale Borough. That's which right. is now our junior high. That's right. Okay, so you y your brothers who followed had the advantage of our own aquatics program here, but you didn't. They swam swam here for North Penn teams and That's they were neat. both on state championship teams and both won individual state championships. That's exciting. That's exciting. Now you told me you swam in college as well. I swam for the University of Maryland, yes. Okay. That's good. Yes. And then you stopped when law school came around. That's, That's right. not an opportunity there. That's right. And when little brothers pass you by. <laughs> <laughs> you said they were really good <laughs> athletes, right. weren't they? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah, neat. They, they did very well. Yeah, well, that's good. That's good. Now, you uh, you have a family that you've, you're raising in Lansdale. You've chosen to come back here to work after you finish your law degree. Kathy and I have been married 15 years, and we have okay. three children. We have a daughter, Tara, a daughter, Victoria, and a little boy, Frankie, who's uh, four and a half. He's four and a half, yeah. so you're busy. You're, you have a, a young teenager and, and a preschooler, so we're, you really are busy. We're busy parents, yes. And how was it? Did you always want to come back to Lansdale to practice law, or I, did you? Was this? Did it just happen? How did Lansdale, that come about? Lansdale is home to me. I've always wanted to be here. I've uh -huh. always enjoyed being here. Uh -huh. I lived in uh, Carlisle when I went to law school, and I lived right outside of Washington in uh, College Park, Maryland, okay. uh, when I went to uh, college. And okay. uh, I always liked Lansdale better. So you wanted to come back here? And always wanted to come back to Lansdale. All right, so you finished Dickinson Law School. Right. And, and came back and uh, hooked up with somebody else to start a firm? Or how did that begin? If the firm bears your name, you're one of the partners of your firm. My partner, Mark Deschel, was uh -huh. in the practice of law here. And I joined what was then his firm, and then we became partners with Mike Ganoff, and uh, later with Jack Dooley, yeah. and uh, uh, later with Dagmar Wolf, and the uh, five of us uh, uh, then became partners with Jay Taylor uh, recently. Oh, and so nice. there are six partners in the firm, nine lawyers in the firm. That's a good. Uh, you told me before it isn't one of it isn't the biggest, but it certainly is a sizable firm, and well, with nine attorneys. We have uh, we have nine attorneys. We have a growing law practice yeah. and. Things are uh, things are going well. We're very happy with the uh, with the practice. That's good. That's good. I know you're involved in lots of things in the North Penn community, and I know you're somebody who believes in being part of the community in which you live. Oh, absolutely. I've always yeah. uh, always been involved in the uh, in the North Penn community. Uh, it was really a pleasure to be at the uh, state championships uh, this yes. uh, this weekend. Kathy and I uh, took a ride up with my brother Tony and his wife Sharon, and we went up to see Billy's uh, Billy's team, and uh, and obviously uh, the North Penn team performed yeah. uh, exceedingly well. They did, from what he yeah. said, it was exciting. Well, that was nice you were there to cheer him on. Oh, and, uh, I, I wouldn't miss that. It must He's, have uh, been a great moment. It was a great moment. Yeah. Yes, it was. I know you're happy for him. Absolutely, That's happy neat. for him and happy for the uh, yeah. for the student athletes that performed yeah. and performed so well. They did so well. Yes. I know we're very proud of them here. Well, you've been part of North Penn School District community for a little almost a year now. It's that, just about a year, right. right? That's right. It's about and, a year. And that um and, and you serve as our general counsel. And I want to talk a little bit about what that means because I think people don't understand how complicated that hat is that you wear. Uh, so that you you are our solicitor and our right. general counsel. Let's talk a little about what that means. I mean, what kinds of legal issues do you handle for the board in well, the district? That's a good question. Actually, I handle a multitude of issues. Mm -hmm. It is it's really a general practice when you represent a municipality and represent a, a school district. Uh, the uh, uh, many things, for example, such as uh, reassessment, we will handle the uh, uh, the assessment cases that are brought against the school district. The school district okay. is a party to all of those. I attend all of the uh, regular meetings yes. of the board. 
And uh, as to the such, least small hours. Uh, well, however, however <laughs> long it takes, yes. the uh, the board members work very hard, and uh, the community should be very proud of them for the effort mm -hmm. that they uh, that they put in. Um, uh, I'm there to provide legal advice. Obviously, I don't make the decisions; the board makes the decisions. Mm -hmm. But whatever those decisions are, then it's uh, it's my duty to provide them with the legal advice to tell them uh, what they can do under the law and what they should not do under the law. And it's my duty, for example, to defend lawsuits. Uh, to give them advice under the school code as to what they should do or, or what they shouldn't do. Uh, one of the areas that I do not represent the board is I don't represent them in, in connection with their uh, labor negotiations. That's right. That's a different f firm that handles that separate from yours. That's right. That's right. That's uh, <laughs> Chuck Sweet handles it from uh, Sweet, Stevens, and Katz is the name of his firm. And I believe they're in Doylestown. I think they are located yeah. in Doylestown. Right. Yes. Well, I know, for instance, in our office, in the community services office, one of the responsibilities that we have is to work on policies. Right. And so as policies are drafted for the board uh, and as they go through drafts, we work with attorneys in your office, with you and other people in your office, right. to say, are we, is this within compliance, is this fitting school code, and you advise us on that. That's exactly right. And, and we do that on a routine basis. Right. Of course, the board sets the policy, That's and right. then we draft it in conformance with what their desires are. That's right. And so it's a lot of people working together but the law needs to be considered in these matters and and you're there to provide that provide that sort of viewpoint that's right. I know that assessments are, have been an issue for a, a while I mean we've that's of great concern to us of course it, certainly uh, because it has a, such an impact on our on our finances so that is I'm sure an ongoing piece that you have a, a lot of involvement in well that's true uh, there are uh, yeah. there are many assessment cases uh, from time to time and when a taxpayer feels that the uh, uh, the assessment is not reflective of the correct market value mm -hmm. for their property and they feel that the assessment is too high, uh, then they'll appeal it. And we as a, uh, uh, a legal representative of the board have to uh, take a look at that mm -hmm. and see whether they're right or they're not right. Mm -hmm. And if they're right, obviously we give our advice to the board and if they're not right, uh, then we proceed uh, with the litigation and hopefully we're successful. Yeah. So you have a lot. You find, I'm sure that it takes a fair amount of time. I'm, I don't know if we're the largest client that you have, but we must be taking a fair amount of your time and the time of other people in your office. Oh, the school district takes uh, takes yeah. a fair amount of time, and yeah. we're very uh, very grateful to yeah. represent the school district. Oh, well, good. It's a partnership that's working, I that, think. It, it certainly is, yeah. and it's uh, it's great to be in your home community. This is the yeah. school that I went to uh, yeah. as uh, uh, as as a young person, and uh, yeah. it's it's nice to represent the hometown school district. Yeah, that is nice. I bet that is a good feeling to yes. be able to do that. Let's talk for a minute about the Sunshine Law. Mm -hmm. We hear a lot about the Sunshine Law. It's a, uh, in the most general terms, I would say it's it's what defines how meetings should be conducted. But perhaps you can help. Let's talk a little bit about the parameters of that and, and what the obligation of the board is mm -hmm. in terms of that and, and how you help us to define that as we go along. Sure. Well, the, the, the law says essentially this. It says that official actions and okay. deliberations of agency business will take place in a meeting that okay. is open to the public. All right. And that's what it is. So any time that the board is taking an official action, mm -hmm. which is essentially a vote, or any okay. time that the board is deliberating, which means the discussion of agency business for purpose of coming to a decision. All right, so that would mean, for instance, if there were an issue, it's board members talking among themselves and reaching a consensus or That's right. perhaps not a consensus, but right. anyway, hearing each other's opinions on an issue. That's right. That's what you're talking about Absolutely. when you're talking about deliberating. Whenever they're, okay. whenever they're interacting, <laughs> sharing uh, information, okay. sharing concerns, and it has to do with a matter of agency business of the school district, okay. that must take place in a, in a public meeting. Okay. And, of course, the, uh, uh, the definition of a public meeting includes uh, public advertisement, meaning right. that you have to provide the public notice as to the time uh, and place and date of the meeting, mm -hmm. and you also have to provide the public with an opportunity to personally attend. Is, is the board ever allowed the opportunity to hear information without deliberating? Is that part of it, or is that not really part of it? Uh, actually, the board is permitted to do that. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the law says exactly uh, the, the initial phrase that I used, yes. that official action and deliberations okay. will take place uh, only at a meeting open to the public. So those are the key parts, that it, it's official action and deliberation. That's correct. And when those things occur, then they must be done in a public forum. That's right. For with notification to the public. That's right, Gail. Okay. We, we had a, uh, uh, an, uh, a presentation mm -hmm. uh, that was made by the, uh, by the architects yes. for the high school. Now, at, at that point in time, 
uh, the architects had already uh, been approved with yeah. respect to their contract in a public meeting, mm -hmm. which was required, and uh, the project costs were capped by a motion of the board, mm -hmm. uh, which I also, of that. course, is, uh, is an issue. That took place, I think, in about March of 1996. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, October of 1996, uh, the board uh, was uh, called to a presentation, and the architects showed the board the, uh, the plans mm -hmm. that had been drawn pursuant to the contract, and then in a subsequent meeting uh, later in October, presented those same plans to the public. Obviously, okay. in, the, uh, in the initial presentation, uh, there was no discussion or deliberation of the board because that's not permitted. Right. In the subsequent presentation, when the presentation was made in front of the public, uh, then deliberation was permitted by the board because we were in a public meeting session. Okay. All right. I understand. All right. That's very interesting. It really is. Okay. Well, hold on just a minute. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. With me is Frank Bartle, North Penn School District Solicitor. Don't go away. While walking in a toy store the day before today, I overheard a crayon box with many things to say. I don't like red, said yellow, and green said, nor do I. And no one here likes orange, but no one knows just why. Well, I bought that box of crayons and took it home with me and drew with all the colors so the crayons could all see. That each of us is special and everyone's unique, but it's when we get together that... The picture is complete! It's unfair to set easy goals for our kids because succeeding in the real world isn't easy. Help the effort to raise standards in America's public schools. Call 1-800-96-PROMISE. Welcome back. My name is Gail Tatum. With me is Frank Bartle, the North Penn School District Solicitor. Frank, let's continue our discussion. This is interesting. I'm sure. learning lots of things about the law. I want to talk to you now about the secession, the Montgomery Township secession and all that's happened with that. That's certainly been uh, headline news and it's taken a lot of your time, I know, in uh, recent weeks and months. It, it has and unfortunately yeah. it's, uh, it's taken uh, some of the resources of the, uh, of the school district. Uh, we had to uh, hire uh, an investigator to uh, provide certain testimony in, in the courtroom and we also had to uh, hire an expert statistician to mm -hmm. provide uh, certain expert testimony as well in the courtroom and it uh, required a fair amount of work of, uh, of my law firm but uh, uh, that's one of the unfortunate things that happens when an action is brought against a school district. A school district must defend itself, and both that's North right. Penn and Happer Horsham defended themselves in connection with this matter. Yeah, let's talk a little about this. I think you make some very good points there, and I want to I want to expand on them a little bit. Um, this was a suit brought against the district and that's Happer right. Horsham, and. Um, and so you, as our solicitor, were charged with the responsibility of, of being prepared in court to defend us that, that's and to right. do what you needed to do. That's right. right. Uh, the, uh, the district took a position, the school yes. board took a position in opposition to the secession effort. Right. Hatboro Horsham School District did exactly the same thing. Their board voted to oppose right. the secession effort. So myself on behalf of the North Penn District and Bob Duffy on behalf of the Hatboro Horsham School District uh, joined together to defend the action. And the okay. action was brought against the uh, school districts right. uh, for secession under Section uh, uh, 242.1 of the Pennsylvania School Code. Okay. And we <laughs> presented that defense in the uh, Court of Common Pleas. And you thus far success. we've been successful. Yes, you have been successful. Let's talk a little bit, if you can, perhaps you can help people understand why it was so important that this uh, not be allowed to, to occur. The board um, clearly made a decision that they wanted to, to not allow this to happen. Can you help uh, explain that a little bit? What, for instance, is the fin there's a financial impact that is significant? Well, there, there, there's a couple of things. Uh, first of all, as, as, I, as I said earlier, yeah. uh, I'm the attorney for the district. The right. board sets the policy as to what the district should be doing. Right, so you're acting on their direction. Exactly. Right. The, the board took the position that uh, we should oppose the secession effort, 
and that uh, uh, was also the position of the Hatboro Horsham Board. Yes. Uh, so both solicitors acted under the direction of the board mm -hmm. in opposing the petition. Mm -hmm. And I think it's uh, it's fair to say that the, posi the position of the North Penn School District and also the position of the Hatboro Horsham School District uh, was that the secession effort was neither financially beneficial to either mm -hmm. district nor was it educationally beneficial to either district. No. That was essentially what both boards concluded. Right, right. Uh, and so then you were charged with, with pulling this defense together and, and making this happen, and, and it took this took weeks and weeks of preparation, I know. Yes, it did. And uh, what happened is uh, it's actually a, uh, a trifurcated proceeding that takes place. The first portion of the proceeding takes place in the Court of Common Pleas. And at that level, the petitioners must prove the validity of the petition. Okay. If they meet that burden and meet that test, then from there, the judge will refer the matter to the Secretary of Education of the Pennsylvania Department mm -hmm. of Education. And at that point in time, the Secretary will pass upon it uh, from an educational standpoint. Okay. The third part of the process comes back to the Court of Common Pleas for the allocation of the assets in the event that the Secretary favorably reviews the application. So it's, it's three oh, things. First, the All petition right. has to be valid, then it has to be approved by the Secretary, and then it has to come back to the Court of Common Pleas, and the Court of Common Pleas divvies up the assets, so to speak. And at, uh, at each of the stages of the proceedings, all of the parties are present. We were successful at yes. the first stage of okay. the proceedings. And it was my advice to the board uh, that if they wanted to contest the petition, uh, that they do it with respect to the validity of the petition. Mm -hmm. And we contested, on, uh, contested it on a number of bases. Uh, the first one was that they didn't have sufficient signatures. Mm -hmm. uh, the second was that uh, there were a number of withdrawals from the petition and that they did not have sufficient signatures if you considered the withdrawals. And the third generally had to do with the, uh, the validity of the petition itself. Mm -hmm. We raised other issues as well, mm -hmm. but those were the three primary issues. Okay. Uh, the judge did not decide with respect to the validity of the petition, nor did the judge decide with respect to the withdrawals, because we were able to show the judge that they did not have a majority of the taxable inhabitants of Montgomery Township sign the petition, even uh, without consideration of the withdrawals, and uh, obviously uh, you assume the validity for purposes right. of just determining what the raw numbers are. Huh. So that was the end of it. So the judge ruled in our favor, in the district's favor, That's saying right. this should, in her opinion, uh, this should not go further. That's right. right. That's right. Now the uh, uh, the uh, team group mm -hmm. who is uh, who organized, uh, organized yes. it and is, is bringing the matter of litigation, uh, they have a right to file a motion for reconsideration before mm -hmm. the judge, and they have done that. And obviously, they're asking the judge to reconsider her opinion uh, and her position. Uh, we will, of course, uh, defend, indicating that the mm -hmm. judge was correct the first time. And when you talk about reconsideration, is it merely that a chance for the judge to look at everything again on yes. her own? It's not a hearing of things again. No. It doesn't require additional court appearances. It's simply saying, would you take a second look? Right. It will, it will essentially require only an argument, if the judge deems that appropriate, okay. uh, between uh, the opposing counsel and, and uh, myself. An argument will be scheduled, and we'll go down and make a presentation before the judge if she deems that to be appropriate. Okay. Uh, the, uh, uh, the motion for reconsideration does not involve an additional hearing. It does not involve uh, any additional fees by the Snyder Bureau uh, or by Dr. Kirsch, who are our two experts. Right. Okay. So essentially at this point, it is your hope, and I would assume the hope of the board as well, that most of the legal expenses in terms of this case are done, although that really is depending on the judge's decision and what's happening. But at this point, depending on if the reconsideration is not, if, she, if the judge rules in our favor, that really is an end to it at this point, well, or is there an appeal process beyond that? They would have a right to appeal okay. that decision. <laughs> uh, of course, again, the record has already been made. Yes. We had okay. a hearing so you don't have for to two days. It again. No, the record okay. is already in existence. Uh, and. Uh, and our experts and the use of our experts, uh, we've essentially completed what we'll do with respect to that at this point in time. Okay. That may change somewhere down the road if, if the other side were to be successful either in the reconsideration or on mm -hmm. appeal. Sure. Uh, but uh, I feel very comfortable yeah. with the decision of the judge as we, uh, as we sit here today. Okay, well that's good. That really was a big hurdle and a huge effort. It was it was yeah, a big effort. It's it uh, it's unfortunate that you have to spend taxpayers' yeah. money to defend yourself, but yeah. uh, that's the job of the school board. Right, and it certainly is your job as solicitor when you're charged to do that. You must do it as you, you build your case as you deem it appropriate in order to properly defend us. That's right. It's my yeah. job to defend the district uh, to the best of my ability, right. and I did that, and thankfully we were successful in this matter. Yeah, and I am glad that we were successful as well, and I'm hopeful that we can. 
we can all move forward together as a unified district and you know, work towards educating all these kids and all that we have ahead of us. I think that'll be greatly beneficial for the district, I yes. I think so too. I do too. Well, we've covered a lot of topics here. We've talked about you as a member of our community, as a general counsel in Sunshine Law and the secession. I know that there will be legal issues in the future that we, perhaps you and I can't even anticipate at this time, uh, that you will be uh, helping us with. And we look forward to your continued advice. I don't know if you have anything more that you would like to add or you feel like we've covered the important things? No, I think, I think we've covered a lot of, uh, of what's taken place in, yeah. the, uh, in the first year. Uh, it's been a, uh, a great experience representing uh, the North Penn School District. That's good. I really enjoy the, uh, the individual board members and the members of the, uh, of the administration and staff. Uh, I think uh, people have a good working relationship here, mm -hmm. and I really look forward to continuing to serve good. the district. Good. Well, we're looking forward to working with you. Thanks for joining me here today. It was nice to have a chance to talk with you. Well, thank you very much, okay, Gail. Okay, maybe we'll I do it, it again in the future. Look forward to it. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. Okay, this is Gail Tatum. This has been A Closer Look. With me today has been Frank Bartle, the solicitor for the North Penn School District. I'll see you next time.